welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the Theater Professor. And I want to welcome back all of our previous viewers and welcome, of course, all of our new viewers on what I consider to be my first day of summer. It is the Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend here in the United States for you international uh, viewers. It's a holiday that we hold in in uh, in May that uh, celebrates the men and women who fought and died in our armed services here in the United States. And so it's kind of viewed by many as the beginning of summer. Uh, now, obviously, there's still school in session, but for me, I'm done with school, so I view it as the beginning of summer. And for many years, I lifeguarded, and Memorial Day weekend was our big opening weekend. So I'm excited for summer to be here. I'm excited. I've got a lot of things going on this summer in regards to the website and regards to uh, some other side projects I'm doing. So this is really exciting for me. Also want to mention, if you are watching this on YouTube, stop over at uh, www.thetheaterprofessor.com. Go ahead, sign up for our free artists membership. Enjoy our forums. Look at all the wonderful artwork that people are sharing, which excites me to no end. I love seeing what other people are creating. And um, become a part of the TTP family. So let's uh, let's go ahead now and move into what we're looking at this week. We are looking at, we're actually going back to an app that I've already done before, but has had some very significant changes, which makes the app amazing. And that app is Paper by 53. So it's up in my right-hand corner. I'm going to click it. Boom. Now, I'm not going to be going through all of the aspects of Paper by 53. If you want to see some of the things that I've already talked about, I will leave a link that goes directly to the first Paper by 53 tutorial. This is a update tutorial. So I'm only going to be really focusing on the new updates. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually add a notebook. And we will name this notebook New Tools. I know, real original. But I needed a title and New Tools sounds amazing. And oops, I wanted to change one other thing. I don't like the cover. Let's make it Paint splattery goodness. There we go. All right. I'm going to open it up and pick this page. And immediately down at the bottom, you see that we have three new tools. And you're wondering to yourself, well, what happened to the other tools? Well, if we scroll, there's our pen, our pencil, our marker, our ink pen, our watercolor brush. They're all still there. They all still work. But over here, we have three new fabulous tools. Let's start with the ruler with the marker on it. Now you're like, what is going on here? This is awesome. I'm going to pick a color. Let's go with, I'm going to go with this reddish here. So if I make a triangle, it creates a beautiful looking triangle that is filled. I can also do the same thing with circle and square. Why is this important? Well, for anybody that does any uh, note-taking in any apps, this creates a wonderful way to create diagrams that you can keep in notebooks. It, it is moving this more towards a multi-purpose app rather than just an art app. So, for example, you know, say you're doing a, an idea graph. You do your circle here. And then you can come out. Oh, did you notice that? It also does lines. Notice the two little blue arrows that were there as well. So if I pull out like this and then click on those arrows, I now have a line with arrows. And we could do another circle here. Maybe do the same thing here. That's a horrible circle, so we're going to rewind that one. And that one was bad too. I'm failing miserably. There we go. Maybe up here we do another one. And I'm not a pro yet at this. I'm still learning this. There we go. Oh, that's a rickety line, but it does have... And there we go. So one of the things that I have noticed is that there is a... There is a size limit to our circle. So if you go too small, it's not going to complete it. Like that time it did. Unfortunately, it covered over. So there we go. So if I go really small, 
Notice how it doesn't do the circle there. Even though that was a pretty good circle, it's not filling, it's not completing it, making it clean, and filling it. So there is, no, that one was bad. There is a size limit. And if you draw too slow sometimes, see that one worked. It's very pinnicky, pinnicky. Pinnicky is a new word. It's finicky, so you just have to be careful. You can do oval ovals with this. Okay, you can do the same thing with, you know, you can do rectangles, you can do squares, the different sizes. You can almost, if you really, you know, if you're into web design, you could actually do a mock-up in this notebook, do a full mock-up of the website, creating, you know, boxes and circles and all that other good things, all the, all those other good things. Your triangle is based on the way you stand. So there we have a different triangle than our first one. That was a poorly drawn triangle, so we won't count that one, but there's another one. So you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, well, what if I wanted to change the inside color? Maybe I didn't want it to match the line. Well, that's what our next tool is, our fill tool. So if I pick a different color here, so let's grab this blue. You can now change the inside color. Oh, that one's not a filled one. But it has to be one of the shapes that that is created with the previous tool. So for example, I can't fill this in. See, I'm tapping in the middle, but all it's doing is creating dots. But as we move to the other ones, we can, and you can, you know, you can change them as much as you want. So let's do a pink one there. All right. So that is one way the fill tool can be used, but there is a second way. So we're going to change our page. If I just draw, it creates a filled object as well. So for example, let's say, You did a graph like that, okay? Or, you know, you wanted to, oops, don't want to change the page. There's a second color over top of the first. It is kind of translucent. It does build up, which is kind of nice. If I do another one, and another one, and another one, you can see the buildup that's happening there. Okay, so that's the way the fill tool can be used. You can use it freehand like this, or if you have a specific shape, it's a horrible circle. There we go. You can refill this the shape with a color. And now let's change the page and show you our little scissory tool of awesome. Okay, so let's say we have something here. I'm going to circle it, circle it, maybe a triangle here. We'll do a square here. Okay, so say I wanted both circles on the same side, the right side. I can grab my scissors and I can cut around the image and now I can move it. And then you tap on the outside and now it's in a new location. You can go one up. If it's a predefined shape like these, I can click my scissors, click inside the shape, and it will only grab the shape. Which is real nice, again, if you're doing some sort of diagram with these and you don't like how they're lined up, you can very quickly, very easily move them. Oops, didn't want to rewind, sorry about that. You can even cut parts of the shape. So now I have a pie. Mm, pie, that sounds good, doesn't it? So you can see how this could very easily be useful in a variety of ways in note-taking applications. The art ability is still there. You know, you can still paint. You can still use your marker. You can still use your pen, pencil and ink pen. All of those items are still there. It just now gives you more options. You're not stuck doing only one thing. You can now play with a whole variety of items and adjust, flip around, make changes. You know, maybe even you could use those shapes as a base and then build out from there. So I really like what Paper 53 is doing. I like how they're expanding it. If you want more information on each of the tools, if you're on the tool palette and hit the question mark, 
it gives you even more. Oh, I forgot to mention, you can even duplicate. So if it's a smart shape, you can hold, as it says here, you can hold and then look at that. So it takes two hands. So you hold with one and now I can duplicate multiples. So literally all I'm doing is holding with my right thumb and then tapping with my left thumb. And there we go. Now we have a whole host of circles. And you can do that with squares, of course. Oh, because they're all connected. I now have huge pieces to duplicate. Oh, that's fun. All right. So these are the new tools that Paper 53 has come up with. Again, I think, uh, I think it's rather ingenious, some of the things that they're adding on and allowing you to... Um, allowing you to do in their program of course you can now you know just like we could before let's close everything if we go up we can see what other how other creators are using this um, you know you can see a lot of the geometric shapes are, are are being put to good use now which is really kind of exciting it's nice to see that uh, people are jumping in and using these tools. Some great mock-ups there. Let's see what else we've got. So that's kind of cool. So definitely take a look at it. If you know, if you're like me and I was using Paper Fifty Three for a while, but then I I always felt like I was limited. Now, to see what it can do now, I plan on coming back into it, maybe using it as a sketchbook again. That's how I started using it, but now also using it as note-taking for when I'm doing a theater production. Uh, oh, here somebody's used some of the shapes really nicely and filled different sections. Oh, that's one thing I meant to say. So if we go back, go back into our, and let's use our shape tool, right? So if we make... One rectangle there, another rectangle there. Grab our fill tool. You'll fill individual sections. You don't fill the entire initial shape. So, so as you can see here, taking different colors for each of the, and then it. Let's say you you know brought a triangle in here, right? You can even. Oops, I need to be there. There we go. You can fill each of those sections as another. So your fill tool doesn't fill up your initial shape. There's no layers here. So it just fills where the lines end. Same thing, you know, if you brought a circle in or an oval. So there's our oval. Let's grab black. Got to make sure I'm on the fill tool. There we go. So that's actually a cool looking piece right there. So if you don't already have Paper 53, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, it's not, not a lot of money. I think, um, man, it was five bucks when I purchased it. I, I don't look at the prices afterwards, uh, after I already own it. I probably should do that when I do these videos. But definitely check it out. Play around with it. Uh, share some of the work that you're coming up with. I'd love to see what you guys are creating in these apps. So that's it for this week. Again, my name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I'm the theater professor, and you've been watching Art Apps for the iPad vidcasts either on YouTube or at thetheaterprofessor.com. Thanks so much, and see you next week.